Well, hey there. Thanks for joining us online at firstchurchnp.com as we prepare our hearts to receive and uh, listen to the message today. I just want to invite you to uh, make this a holy place. Whether you're uh, out for a walk and listening, driving in your car, whatever it is that you're doing, um, you know, this is an opportunity to take in what the Spirit has said through, through us as a church, but hopefully speaks to you and your soul. While you're here at firstchurchmp.com, um, I just hope that you'll connect with us. Fill out that connect section and let us know where you're watching from, if you have a prayer request or anything like that. Um, maybe you're interested in a ministry. That's a good place to do. Right now, uh, another great way to connect with us is to visit fr- uh, facebook.com backslash firstchurchmp. There we're um, producing our full worship experience and we'd love to have you worship with us online Sundays at 9, right now anyway. So um, if that changes, there will be updates there on the website, but you're already there. So um, we are in a series focusing on staying true, focusing on, well, what exactly God's Word is. It's all based out of the book of 1 Timothy in the Bible, and uh, we hope you'll enjoy it. So, here we go. Here's Pastor Doug. Enjoy. Well, again, good morning. I'm Pastor Doug. If you just happen to be joining us, and uh, we're uh, ready for the message this morning, and uh, this is a whole lot more about what the Holy Spirit is going to say to you and do in you and through you today than, than the words I have to offer. But I would invite you to uh, open up your Bible app, or if you have a Bible there handy, you could use that as well, and uh, turn to the first letter of Timothy. Uh, it's towards the back of the New Testament, towards the back of your Bible. Uh, but that's where we're going to be today, is 1 Timothy. We're going to be in the first uh, several verses of chapter 2. So I just want to invite you uh, to follow along there. Also, uh, the message today has some uh, information in it. It always does, but, but this has a little bit more information to it. And it might be, uh, there, there might be some things that you want to jot down. Um, if you don't have pencil and paper handy today, you could always go back uh, to our Facebook page or to our website page, um, firstchurchmp.com, and there you could find the message again. But th- this is a type of message that it has a, a big teaching component to it as well as a proclamation component. But before we go there and get engaged, um, could I lead us in prayer, please? Well, Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for your abundant grace. We thank you for your amazing love and for your presence with us in each moment. As we are worshiping together right now, we're seeking, we're longing, we're desiring, we're thirsting for a word from you. Would you speak to us today? Speak to us in a way that each of us could understand. Speak to us in a way that that would change each of our lives. Maybe today we need to change a mindset or an attitude. Maybe today we need a change of heart. Maybe today we need something to change deep in our soul. But Jesus, we're coming to you and asking that you would speak to us today, each one of us. So I call upon the Holy Spirit now to anoint us. Anoint us with your power. Anoint us with your presence. Show us your glory. Reveal to us your word. And Lord, I would just ask that my words might not get in the way today. That my words might not get in the way of your word. So we're listening. Speak to us now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, during the last several weeks, I have found myself praying more. I'm praying for my daughter who's planning a wedding in three weeks. I'm praying for my daughter who's been laid off of her job because of the virus. I'm praying for my marriage as my wife and I try to navigate both of us working from home. 
I'm praying for the families who cannot have a funeral for their loved one at First Church. I'm praying for the couple whose April wedding was postponed till November. I'm praying for those who are alone at home and struggling with the lack of human interaction. And I'm praying for me. My impatience sometimes grows pretty large. My loneliness sometimes causes me to sigh deeply. My frustration sometimes does not honor people or Jesus. I find myself praying more because I need what only Jesus can give. Prayer is the most important conversation that you will have today. For some, it is the first conversation of the day. For others, it's a conversation that continues throughout the day. And for still others, prayer is that last conversation of the day before releasing it all to Jesus. No matter when it happens, prayer is the most important conversation you will have today. Prayer is our conversation with Jesus. During the first century, the Christ followers in Ephesus were struggling. Some were being tempted to mingle their faith in Jesus with their devotion to a Greek goddess named Artemis. Others were being tempted to corrupt their faith in uh, in Jesus with a false teaching known as Gnosticism. Others were just confused about what to believe about Jesus. Staying true was difficult. There was struggle and confusion and division growing in the church. Paul responds to all of this by encouraging his partner in ministry, Timothy, to confront any teaching that was taking people away from their relationship with Jesus. But that's not all that Paul recommends. It's not just about getting our beliefs correct. Paul also calls the Christ followers in Ephesus to adjust their priorities. A shift in priorities can happen when the people change the way that they are engaging in prayer. I'd like to walk us through the text there in 1 Timothy chapter 2, just rather carefully, and just see what Paul has to say. See what God has to say about how we engage in prayer and how that impacts what we're experiencing around us. Pray first thing. Pray first thing. The first priority for Christ followers during times of struggle and confusion and division is prayer. That's the first thing. In 1 Timothy 2, verse 1, Paul writes this. First of all, I ask you to pray for everyone. Things were good, but they were not great in the church in Ephesus. There were some challenges, there were some struggles, and and, and there was increasing doubts growing amongst the people. A mediator might call the people to sit down and visit with one another. A counselor might call the people to express themselves in an authentic way. A business person might remind the people about the bottom line, and an educator might ask people what they're learning through all of this. But Paul takes a different approach to this season of struggle, confusion, and division that the people there are facing. Paul says the first priority is to pray. He writes this, first of all, first of all, I ask you to pray. So let's make prayer our first priority priority. Next, Paul says, pray for everyone. Christ followers are called to pray for everyone during times of struggle, confusion, and division. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, Paul writes this, first of all then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions. Paul lists out there four types of prayer. We offer prayers of supplication. These are prayers asking Jesus to help with a specific need. We offer prayers of petition. These are prayers asking Jesus to bless a specific person. 
We offer prayers of intercession. These are prayers pleading with Jesus with an urgent and bold request. We offer prayers of thanksgiving. These are prayers that are an expression of our gratitude. In addition to these four types of prayer, Paul calls us to pray for political, business, and religious leaders. He's especially concerned that we don't forget to pray for those who lead in the highest levels. The types of prayer Paul outlines are much less important than the focus of prayer. Christ followers are called to pray for everyone during times of struggle, confusion, and division. So let's pray for everyone. Next, pray with purpose. The purpose of our prayers during times of struggle, confusion, and division is to please Jesus. Again, going back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, this is verses 3 and 4. Paul writes this, This kind of prayer is good. And it pleases God our Savior. God wants everyone to be saved and to know the whole truth. Prayer is not a slot machine into which we plug a few words and then get a big prize. Prayer is not a a positive thinking pep talk in which we adjust our attitude. Prayer is not an exercise in self-help in which we fix ourselves. Prayer is something different than that. Prayer is a surrender to the power and the wisdom and the provision of Jesus. Prayer is a submission to the love and the timing and the leadership of Jesus. Prayer is an offering of praise and gratitude and worship to Jesus. Prayer is a conversation with Jesus in which I remember that Jesus is the Savior and I'm not. I remember that Jesus is God, and I am not. So we pray with a purpose, and the purpose of prayer is to please Jesus. We honor God the Father, we worship Jesus the Son, and we follow God the Holy Spirit. So let's pray in a way that pleases Jesus. Next, pray with confidence. We can pray with confidence during times of struggle and confusion and division. Even though it's not easy, we can pray with confidence. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5, Paul writes this, There is only one God, and Christ Jesus is the only one who can bring us to God. We pray with confidence because Jesus is the only one who can speak on our behalf with God the Father. Paul writes, Christ Jesus is the only one who can bring us to God. It is only through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus that we have any access, that we would have any audience with our Heavenly Father. So through Jesus, we can have confidence in approaching the Lord God. So let us pray with confidence. Next, pray with attitude. Pray with attitude. There are two attitudes that are important when we pray during times of struggle, confusion, and division. Again, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, this is verse 8, Paul writes this, I desire then that in every place people should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. There's two attitudes here. First is our attitude towards Jesus. Paul says, pray, lifting up holy hands. There are several physical positions or postures we can take when we pray. These postures are important because they reveal our attitude towards Jesus. We can sit, we can stand, we can kneel, we can look up. We can lay flat out on the floor. We can bow our head. We can jump. We can spin. We can dance. Most of us will use more than one of these postures of prayer. Why? Because each posture says something a little different about our attitude towards Jesus. One of the most common postures of prayer is the lifting up of our hands. 
In Psalm 63, verse 4, we hear, So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. When we lift up our hands during prayer, we're revealing our attitude toward God. When I lift up my hands, I'm seeking God's power. I'm giving God praise. I'm seeking God's blessing. I'm surrendering to Jesus' will. I'm putting Jesus as my first priority. And I'm physically declaring to any who might see that I am trusting Jesus. So first is our attitude towards Jesus. Pray by lifting up my hands. But second is our attitude toward people. In another translation of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, Paul writes this. Pray lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Think about your hands. Think about your hands. When I'm angry, I clench my fists. When I'm guilty, I hide my hands. When I'm nervous, I wring my hands. When I'm confused, I raise my hands in a questioning manner. When I'm welcoming, I open my hands. When I'm compassionate, I extend my hand. When I'm scolding, I shake my hand. When I tell you off, I raise my hand and one finger to indicate that you're number one. We're called to pray with the right attitude toward other people. I can come to prayer with a humble heart that is slow to anger quick to forgive, and filled with love. In his letter to the church at Ephesus, Paul gets very specific about our attitude towards other people. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, Paul writes this. I I think it just speaks exactly to the attitude towards other people that we have when we pray. Paul writes, put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. When my attitude is right toward Jesus and other people, I believe Jesus listens and responds to my prayers. We're we're living in a season of struggle and confusion and division. And the challenge is, well, the challenge is I begin to doubt that Jesus can do as much as I need or I ask. I can get so focused on our circumstances. I can get so focused on the struggle or on the confusion or on the division that I no longer see the power and the presence and the provision of Jesus Christ. And when that happens, my prayer life begins to diminish, begins to decrease. Paul saw this happening to the Christ followers in Ephesus, so he was compelled to encourage them to pray. I believe we're facing something very, very similar today. Maybe the cause is different, but but the spiritual impact is very similar. And I believe that today the Holy Spirit is encouraging you and me to pray. Remember that prayer is our conversation with Jesus. So let's have a little talk with Jesus today. Let's have a little talk with Jesus every day in this coming week. So let's pray right now. Jesus, we're so aware that we're praying more. And it's because of the struggles. It's because of the confusion. It's it's because of the division. But it's also because we love you and we trust you. We trust that you will provide. We trust that you are present with us. We trust that your power is touching and impacting our lives and our world right now. 
So we want to engage you, Jesus, in prayer. It's not just because things are hard. It's also because we love you so much. We want to have that conversation with you today and every day. But help us to remember too, Jesus, that we pray not just for our own sake. We pray to please you. We pray so that we can call out your name on behalf of family and neighbors and co-workers and classmates and leaders in the highest positions. So Jesus, give us that confidence. Give us that sense of purpose. Help us, would you please, to have the right attitude as we pray. Jesus, we do love you. Thank you for being so patient with us. But also, Jesus, we thank you for being our Savior, for being the Lord of lords and the King of kings. We thank you, too, for being our friend and for being that unshakable, unbreakable rock upon which we can build our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for listening and caring and answering our prayers. We offer our prayers today in the name of Jesus. Amen.